Welcome to this lecture on digital communication using GNU radio. My name is Kumar Appaya and in this lecture we are going to continue our look at demodulation in the context of symbol error rates and bit error rates. If you recall in our previous lectures we have been looking at symbol error rate rather closely and we have seen how we can compute the symbol error rate for a host of constellation types. In particular, we checked it for BPSK, for PAM4, for QPSK, QAM16 and we remarked about the similarities and differences among these. One aspect that we touched upon was that for complicated constellations, you may need to use something like a union bound to have an approximation. But one thing that was left unanswered was, this is about symbol error rates, but this course is about transmission of bits. So, what is the difference between symbol error rates and bit error rates and how are bit error rates computed for a given constellation? That is the topic that we will concern ourselves with today. So, the first thing that you must observe is that bit error rates are different from symbol error rates. The intuition is that in MRE signaling, it is not always the case that when you have one symbol error, all your bits are wrong. For example, in the case of let us say uh, QPSK, in the case of QPSK you have four symbols, each symbol corresponds to two bits. So if you send the symbol that corresponds to, to the bit pair 0, 0, it could be that the symbol gets flipped to 0, 1, meaning it gets switched to the symbol that corresponds to 0, 1 because of the noise. In this case, the 0, 0 is going to be detected as 0, 1. This corresponds to, of course, a symbol error as you have seen in the previous lectures. But out of these two bits, only one of the bits is incorrect. Therefore, this particular symbol error resulted in only one bit error. So in the same way, extending this, one symbol error does not mean that all bits are erroneous. Therefore, we need to extend our computation of the symbol error rates to actually account for this and therefore, bit error rates also called bit error ratios are different from symbol error rates. Now, this leads to an interesting question which I have already hinted to. You have M symbols and you want to assign bits <coughs> to these symbols. How do we assign these bits appropriately? For example, let us say that you have a QPSK, which symbol becomes 0, 0, which symbol should become 1, 1, which one should be 0, 1, which one should be 1, 0, does my arrangement of these actually affect the performance? This is something that we will see. For the moment, we will concern ourselves with those constellations where m is a power of 2 so that we can easily assign the bits. For example, if you have a number like 16, that easily means that each symbol corresponds to 4 bits. So, does the actual bit allocation to symbols matter? The answer is that in many constellations it does. So, you have to carefully allot the bits to the symbols in order to minimize the bit errors in case a symbol error occurs. So, that is you have to make sure that the mapping between the bits and the symbols is made in such a way that for most symbol error events, the number of bit errors is not really high. That is something that we will see momentarily. <clears throat> we will take the example of QPSK. In the case of QPSK, you have let us say 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0 and 1, 1, this particular allotment. Let us actually just do this more carefully. So, we have 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1 and I think you have 1, 0. Okay. If you remember our discussion on symbol error rates, then we said that the, so let us say that you look at 0, 1. When you send 0, 1, the most likely events uh, in terms of nearest neighbors as well, you can say are these. So, say QPSK and this and this are the most likely error events. Why is that the case? That is, it is more likely that the real part 
goes above d by 2 or the imaginary part goes above d by 2, the probability that both go above d by 2 is smaller. If you, do, if you don't remember this, you can go back to the previous lecture and confirm the probability of these events was actually q of d upon 2 sigma times 1 minus q of d upon 2 sigma. Okay. While the probability of this particular thing happening was square. That is the property of both the real part and imaginary part going into the incorrect region. This is smaller. So, we can essentially say that 0 1 becoming 1 1 is less likely, but that is actually not what we want because in this case 0 1 going to 1 0 is a problem because this particular event you have 0 1 becoming 1 0 corresponds to 2 bit errors. This is a very bad thing because a very likely event is causing 2 bit errors when you have a single symbol error. Similarly, for 0 0 also if you go here this corresponds to 2 bit errors. Therefore, this is a bad allocation of symbols to bits bad allocation because this particular allocation of bits or mapping of the pair of bits to the 4 QPSK symbols results in likely symbol error events corresponding to a large amount of bit error. Therefore, this is something that we want to avoid and this is something that we should try to avoid if at all possible. So, in this particular manner one symbol error rather the most likely symbol error results in 2 bit errors and that is something which that we want to strictly avoid. So, how do you do this? So, in this case we now choose a different approach. We say 0 1 0 0 1 0 1 1 that is let me just 0 1 0 0 let us see. I am going to call this gray coded it is in the name of the scientist. Okay. Gray coding is where you ensure that all the likely events, likely symbol error events result in the minimum number of bit flips. So, uh, let me just check what I chose here. So, I am consistent 0 1 1 0 0 Now, let us look at our likely events. Our let us look at it for this one. Our likely events are this one, our likely events are this one. These correspond to only one bit error. Okay. Therefore, the most likely transition of the symbols which is from this particular location to here and this particular location to here, these are the more likely ones, these correspond to only one bit error as opposed to the less likely one which corresponds to two bit errors which is okay. I mean in the sense you cannot avoid it if that happens it is fine, but in terms of how less likely it is if this is D and this is D, this is uh, I will actually mark this as D, this is T root 2. Therefore, this is actually much less probable because this appears in the exponential if you look at the approximation for the Q it appears in the exponential and this is going to be less likely. Therefore, by performing gray coding you have ensured in this particular constellation that the less likely error events are going to result in exactly one bit error for the symbol error and for the more you know sorry the more likely symbol error events you are ensuring that there is only going to be one bit error for one symbol error. For the least likely symbol error event you will have two bit errors but that is fine, but this is much much better than the previous situation. If you really want to calculate the bit error probability for this you can go ahead, but I am actually going to calculate the bit error probability for this particular gray coded constellation. Let us start with a clean slate. Okay. So, I am going to say this is 0 1, this is, uh, okay, so this is 0 1, 0 0, 1 0, 1 1 and uh, if you do not if you recall this particular constellation point was root ES upon 2 comma root ES upon 2. 
This choice was made primarily because we wanted the average energy to be Es. So if we choose all of these at a distance of Es root Es from the origin, uh, you will end up getting an average energy of this constellation to be Es, which is what we wanted. Now the distance between these two constellation points is d is I mean between the nearest neighbors is it's 2 times root Es upon 2, 2 root Es. This is something which you remember. Now we want to find the bit error rate. So let us focus on let us say only one of them. Let us focus only on the MSB that is we will focus on this MSB. Now there are a couple of approaches which you can use but there is a nice trick which you can play. The trick which you can play is to observe that the MSB is 0 whenever the received point is above the y axis sorry the above the x axis the MSB is 1 whenever the received point is below the x axis that is whenever you are here the MSB is 0 whenever you are here the MSB is 1 irrespective of the real irrespective of the point at which you are in on the x axis. Above x axis first bit is 0, below x axis first bit is 1. So this is a really neat observation meaning you can make decisions about bits optimally without having to for one of the bits optimally without having to care about the other bit. But this is something which I remarked about in the previous lecture very briefly although that this is something which is to be expected. Why? The reason is because what we actually have is we have a BPSK sitting on the x axis and a BPSK sitting on the y axis and you are essentially combining them, you are combining these to get this particular constellation. Therefore, if you now start looking at QPSK as a pair of BPSKs, it will become really easy for you to understand and appreciate the similarity between these and you can also easily compute the bit error rate or symbol error rate. So I am just going to say this is a, a combination of BPS case. Fine, okay. Let us actually now just compute the bit error rate for QAMS, bit error rate for QAM4. or QPSK. Now before we go ahead there is an important point that I have to mention which is about the bit energy. So in this case in the case of QPSK the constellation point has energy ES and this ES corresponds to 2 bits and therefore what is the energy per bit? Since ES corresponds to one constellation point and one constellation point has two bits, we will define a new quantity called EB which is equal to ES upon bits per symbol which in this particular constellation is ES upon 2. So ES upon 2 is our EB. Now let us actually find out this particular um, you know bitter rate for this but even before that let us actually do it for BPSK. For BPSK it is very easy you have this you have this and this is 0 and this is minus root ES plus root ES. ES corresponds to 1 bit therefore EB is equal to ES. Therefore, the bit error rate is actually the symbol error rate. Why? 1 bit is 1 symbol. So, we can write this as Q of root of 2 EB upon N naught. Why? Because in the case of BPSK, 1 symbol error corresponds to 1 bit error Okay, and that is the only event which is possible. So, the symbol error rate and bit error rate are the same Q of root of 2 ES upon N naught which is the same as Q of root of 2 EB upon N naught. But for QPSK, it is a little complicated and tricky, but there are a couple of ways to do this. First, if you observe the fact that our only the imaginary value is going to determine your MSB, then 
the only thing you need to concern yourself yourself with is the value of the imaginary axis of the received point therefore you just have to decide on the y axis projection what the value is and as you recall you had gaussian noise therefore for for qpsk let's say you had this this is the distance and remember d is the distance and our recipe was always q of d upon 2 sigma okay q of d upon 2 sigma in this case however our d is going to be root 2 es so this is going to be let me just write it in a more neat way so i'm just going to grab this eraser Okay, so now Q of d by 2 sigma which is equal to and remember that our d is actually 2 root E s but 2 root E s is 2 times e, e, you know 2 times E s but E b is actually E s upon 2. So, our d is actually going to be 2 times so, e, so what I am trying to point out is that E s is 2 E b. So, this is equal to q of root of 4 e b okay, divided by 2 times root of n naught by 2. Why did I do this? Because it is d upon 2 sigma and remember n naught by 2 is the amount of noise per dimension. So, we get this to be q of root of and this 4 and 2 cancel 2 e b by n naught. Okay, this is what we get. Now, here there is some element of confusion or you know worry because you I said for BPSK it is q of root of 2 e b by n naught, while for QPSK also it is q of 2 root, root of 2 e b by n naught. What gives? Well, it turns out that the formula for both is the same, but since the constellations are different. The amount of power that you spend which is E s in both the cases is different. That is in the case of Q P S K your E s is actually 2 E b while in the case of B P S K the E s is actually E b and because of that the amount of noise that actually affects you in the case of B P S K is only the real noise. In the case of Q P S K there is real noise and imaginary noise affecting each part. So, now this Q of root of 2 E b, 2 e b by n naught is the bit error rate probability for the MSB and I do not think you will be surprised by symmetry for the LSB also it is the same. So, this way we can actually compute the bit error probability for QPSK as well. Now, let us actually go back to our discussions. So, for the case of QPSK we have root Q of root of 2 E B by n naught. Okay, this is actually incorrect this is actually E S by n naught. Okay, this is the key uh, uh, take away from this that you can look at it as two BPSKs and use the same approach and the formula turns out to be the same form, but note the difference in the case of QPSK, BPSK has E s equal to E b, QPSK has E s equal to 2 E b that is the key difference. Now, in the case of PAM4, let us actually just try to brainstorm a little and try to see what happens. In the case of PAM4, actually uh, let me just, um, let me make a, another remark before I go, go to PAM4. Uh, if you remember, we had a complicated formula for the symbol error rate for QPSK, right? Let us actually just get that. So, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0 and remember Q of root of 2 E B by n naught which is equal to q of root of E s by n naught is the probability of making a bit error. Now, in, if you want the symbol error probability, you can actually compute it very easily now. The symbol error probability is equal to and if you just go back in our slides, you can get the expression. Yeah, it was q, you know, 2 q of E s minus square and all those. You can actually get this from the, you can actually get this from 
this particular bit error rate expression. A symbol error occurs when at least one bit error has occurred. At least one bit error has occurred when there is actually the, pro, the 1 minus no bits have occurred. So, it is actually you can do it in multiple ways when at least one bit error has occurred. So, what is one bit error occurring mean? One bit error can occur because of this. So, that leads to this mute, you know q of root of 2 e b by n naught is a probability that the MSB gets flipped plus q of root of 2 e b by n naught sorry let me just uh, uh, change it up. I'll, I wanted to write this as E s so that you know you are consistent. Okay, so, this is E s here also we will write E s. Minus of course, uh, so this is basically one has occurred another has occurred minus both this is the event with that corresponds to both the bits getting flipped that is double counted. So, we will do minus you can use the bit error rate uh, formula to compute the symbol error rate as well. You just have to look at the probability of making at least one bit error. Okay? The other approach is to just say the probability of getting at least one bit error is 1 minus no bit error has occurred and no bit error you can always just use the Q formula and figure it out. So, if you want to do that you will essentially have to do 1 minus 1 minus Q the whole square and you will get the same result. Now, let us just move to PAM4. I am going to write 1, 2, 3, 4 and you can write the normalized forms I have no uh, you know I am not going to do that right now. But you have to now assign 4 that means you have to assign a pair of bits to each. You can do 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1 and um, 1, 0 and 1, 1. So, this evidently is not a good idea because if you look at these two, these are nearest neighbors and a single bit error results in sorry single symbol error results in two bit errors. This is a very likely event because these are very close and a single bit error results in single symbol error results in two bit errors. So, you should not do this. So, this is not the right way. So, I am going to just undo what I did here and I am going to write 1 1 1 0. Now, if you look at this these two are close one symbol error results in one bit error. These two are close 0 1 and 1 1 1 symbol error only 1 bit is flipped. These two are close 1 symbol error only 1 bit error that is it. So, in this particular scenario the bit error rate is minimized because of your the fact that you have done gray coding wherein you have ensured that a flip of 1 bit flip of a symbol results in only 1 bit flip in the most likely symbol flip events. Of course, you can still say what if I go from here to here ok it is true you will get 2 bits. What if we go from here to here? Of course, you will get 2 bits in, in incorrect, but still it is better than the old one because these two are much further. In fact, twice as far the probability of those events is much less likely. Therefore, for PAM4 you should use gray coding and like I did 0 0 0 1 1 1 1 0. The most likely event lead to only 1 bit error. And the BER can be found much like BPSK except there is a slight issue. The issue is you have to do it separately for this one and this one and separately for these pair as well because in this particular case for 0 0 to 0 1 it is very easy you just have to find see for example, 0 0 going to 0 1 right. You just have to find the probability of this particular symbol landing in this region because that, that is the region where the, that is the, the reason where that is the region where the least significant bit essentially flips. In fact, over here it does not flip. So, you have to essentially evaluate the error probability by integrating evaluate the error probability by integrating this particular integ this particular Gaussian from this point all the way till this point. Now, similarly for these two you have slightly more complicated scenario because there can be two different error events going to the left and right. So, over here this 0 over here if you go to the left 
this 1 becomes 0. To the right, this 1 remains 1 but goes further to the right and becomes 0. So you have to be very careful about the exact regions of integration. But again, if you really want to, you can just perform a simulation and try to get the bit error rate as well. One thing to remember is that the PAM4 essentially serves as an ingredient for your QAM16 as well. Now, in the case of QAM16, we have to ensure that we do a bit allocation that results in one bit error as far as possible for the least likely, for the most likely error, symbol error events. In this particular gray coding situation, we have actually done that. What have we done? We have said 1010, 1011. So let's look at what we have done here. In fact, let's search for 00. I have started here. 0000, there are two nearest neighbors, this one and this one. For each of them, we want exactly one error, sorry, one bit error whenever one symbol error happens. So we, I chose to flip the third bit from the right here and the first bit over here. So I got 0000, 0100. This is great. Next, let's look at it for this one. To the left, we've already checked. When you go above, 0100 goes to 0101. That corresponds exactly to one bit flipped. 0100 to 1100 corresponds to only the most significant bit flipped, one bit flipped. The rest, for example, these are not significant events because they are much further than the nearest neighbors. Next, if you look at this particular symbol, 0101, we check below, it's only one bit. We check to the left, it's only one bit. We check to the right, 0101, 1101, only one bit. We check above, 0111 to 0101, only one bit. So if you want to just pause and check, this particular configuration ensures that you will have the nearest neighbors, all four nearest neighbors for these and all two for these, all three for these have only one bit flip. This is just an extension of the PAM4 or if you want another way, I'll give you another way to look at it. The MSB, the most significant bit is 0 to the left and 1 to the right. Okay? This is a way by which you can get the constellation. It's one to, 0 to the left and 1 to the right. Next, if you look at the least significant bit, it actually it's 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. Okay? And if you look at the other bits as well, there is a pattern. I want to remark that this particular allocation of bits to symbols is not unique and you can come up with your own gray coded version of you know, uh, the constellations that is as good as any other, as good as this. So you will actually have no problems in coming up with another allocation which will still be gray coded, but it will have the same performance and it is equivalent in every other way. It's just a question of your choice of mapping. Now, again in this case, computing bit errors you can do. For example, like I told you, if you decipher a pattern for the MSB, right? 0 is on the left, 1 is on the right. Therefore, you can just use your BPSK-like approach to compute the bit error rate for the MSB. But for the others, you have to look carefully. For example, for the let's say third one, it's 1, 1 here, 0, 0 here, and you have to decipher it more carefully. In general, it is cumbersome, but it is something which you can do. Again, if you don't want to do it, or if you're in a scenario where you don't need to do it, you can just perform a simulation in your scenario and get the bit error rate for the SNR that you desire. One more remark I wanted to make is that in this case, remember, 4 EB is yes, something that you should keep in mind. So let's summarize. Remember that the ratio of the signal energy and noise energy decides the symbol and bit error rates. And we can compute the symbol error rates uh, you know, using uh, accurate approaches or you can approximate them using probability based approaches like the union bound or using the nearest neighbors and approximating it. And when it comes to bit error rates, the same things apply except that you also have to ensure that you have to first look at the allocation of bits to symbols and only when you allocate bits to symbols, then you can compute the bit error rate and when you do the allocation of bits to symbols, make sure that you do it in such a way that the number of 
bit errors for the for the most likely symbol errors is minimized. Gray coding is a perfect recipe for that. Basically, the most likely symbol errors will result in only one bit error and that is the key to ensuring that you minimize the bit error rate. Now, so far we have looked at the impact of noise on symbols and uh, symbol error rates and uh, bit error rates, but we have still have an idealized communication system where there is no other impairments other than noise. In the next lecture series onwards, we are going to look at how we can relax the assumptions on ideality of our transmitter receiver system, their pairing and so on and see how we can get towards a more realistic communication system model. Thank you.